A man is accusing Sean Diddy Combs of drugging his alleged sex assault victims. That's one of the new details we're learning tonight about the sex trafficking allegations against the music. Jay-Z has just admitted he's tangled up in some major illegal issues and might be facing jail time, but he's not sitting back. He's pulling together a top-notch legal team to tackle his own mess. All of this because Diddy said, you know what, if I'm coming down, I'm taking everyone with me. What does Diddy have under his sleeve that is making all rappers nervous? Looking at him as a saint going to a party that ain't nothing but sin. Drinking, maybe fornication, man on man, woman on woman, he on she. Let us explore why nobody wants to mess with the most wanted icon in history behind closed doors of stardom. Now, people have this strange fascination with figures like Satan, Lucifer, and God. Jay-Z even has a nickname, Jova Oro. That sort of plays into that whole vibe. It's like something from a rap song that sticks in your head. I remember these lyrics from when I was just a kid, and they're still with me. I'm a do you like baby them do me. It's a harsh line, and I've never forgotten it. Here's some advice for young rappers who dream of big-time fame in Hollywood. Be careful at those glitzy parties. Cat Williams warned us all, don't go opening strange doors. If you do, you might see things that shock you, things involving famous people you wouldn't expect. These mansion parties are wild. The whole place is buzzing. And there are private parties in smaller rooms. I haven't been famous for long, but I was thrilled to be there. You start snooping around, peeking into different rooms, and suddenly, you stumble upon something that looks shady. It's almost like someone's guilty of something, right? To be gay in Hollywood, you never fucking expected. They be having these big ass mansion parties, and the mansion party, the whole mansion is a party, and then it's a separate party in the little rooms. I ain't been famous that goddamn long. I'm excited to be at the mansion party. You be looking in all the goddamn rooms, and you around and look in the wrong room and shit. Moving on to Diddy. He's trying to make a deal with the authorities by throwing Jay-Z's name into the mix over some serious accusations. It's about a woman named Corey. Jay-Z allegedly gave her a super expensive ring that she couldn't possibly afford. And after she passed away, that same ring showed up on Beyonce's finger. That looks pretty suspicious, doesn't it? The story gets even more tangled. There was supposed to be an interview with a journalist about someone named Kathy White. But the journalist died from a brain aneurysm right before she could tell her story. Now, everyone's buzzing about it. Was it just a freak accident? Or is there more to the story? The rich and famous play a tough game. And sometimes, it seems like they can twist any situation to their advantage. In Hollywood, where everyone's watching your every move, you have to be careful about what you do and what doors you open, literally and figuratively. Those hidden parties and mansions aren't just about fun. Sometimes they hide the darker sides of fame. For anyone rising in the ranks of the entertainment world, remember these stories. The glitz and glamour can be enticing, but they can also lead to some real trouble. Whether it's getting caught up in legal battles, dealing with the fallout of what happens behind closed doors, or facing the unexpected consequences of your actions, the path to fame is fraught with challenges that can catch you off guard. So, keep your wits about you. Hollywood isn't just about the big screen and bright lights. It's about navigating a labyrinth of relationships, rumors, and sometimes regrettable decisions. Keep your eyes open, listen to those who have been there before, and always think twice before stepping into situations that seem too good to be true. Because in the world of fame, every favor and every party could have strings attached that pull you into corners you never intended to explore. Remember the whole mess with Pimpy? That's nothing compared to the storm that followed R. Kelly. Now everyone's wondering, Who's next on the list? The lineup is out there, and it's clear Jay-Z is setting up someone new. He's been at this game for a while, you know. Jay-Z has a history of pushing people out of the way. He took down DeHaven, swiping his entire identity like it was nothing. Then Beagle and D-Dash weren't spared either. He grabbed D-Dash's love too. And let's not forget R. Kelly. It seems Jay-Z always wants to be at the top, no matter what it takes. DeHaven's got some stories, and he's eager to share them. He reached out, wanting to get his side out there. We even talked to him last year, remember? Now, think about this. There are whispers that Sean Carter, yeah, that's Jay-Z, 
might have played a part in some really shady stuff. Rumors say he might have messed with Hake Williams to tamper with a plane, all because he wanted to eliminate a rival and boost Beyonce's career. Just think about that for a second. Then, take the chat on 106 in Park with Mary J. Blige and Jig Free. Both have had their run-ins with Sean Carter's manipulations. And here they were, talking about Aaliyah's death like they had no clue what was going on behind the scenes. It's weird, right? A Diddy victim, a Jay-Z victim, and a lost superstar all discussing something so heavy, pretending to be in the dark. And then there's Claudia Jordan. She's making waves, talking about how people are scared to come forward. And then she brings up her own fears, wrapped in a critique of why others stay silent. She's touching on some real nerves there. With all this drama, it's no surprise if Lucy and Gra end up getting dragged into the mess too. It's like when one big name falls, others are bound to follow. In the celebrity world, it's all about connections and who you can trust, or more often, who you can't. This whole scenario isn't just about who did what, it's about the power plays behind the scenes. Everyone's trying to climb higher, and they don't care who they step on to get there. From stealing identities to sabotaging careers, it's all part of the game. And when someone like Jay-Z moves pieces on the board, people pay attention because they know he plays to win. As doubts grow darker, celebrity power's tangled web starts to fall apart. What you're about to see could change what you think about the rich and famous. Whispered deals and silent threats. So what's going to happen next? Well, if one starts to fall, like Diddy, you can bet he won't go down alone. There are too many intertwined lives and careers. This is more than just a few rumors. It's about how the elite control narratives and manage to keep their hands clean while doing dirty work. In Hollywood, where every move is calculated, you've got to watch your back. The higher you rise, the more you've got to lose, and the more people there are waiting for a chance to take your place. So for anyone looking up to these big names, take note. It's a treacherous path to the top, filled with alliances and betrayals. And if you're not careful, you might just be the next one caught in the crossfire of someone else's ambition. It has come to light that a group of high-profile individuals were deeply involved in some highly questionable activities, running an intimate business. Diddy, known to many, is at the forefront of this scandal. However, it's clear he's not planning to take the fall alone. Surprisingly, Candace Owens has shed some light on this issue, suggesting that her views, though often controversial, might hold some weight in this case. Candace argues that mainstream media is deliberately ignoring this lawsuit. The reason? It involves Lucian Charles Grange, a powerhouse in Hollywood and the music industry. As the CEO of Universal Music Group since 2010, his influence is vast, and it seems his connections might be helping to keep this story out of the headlines. The legal documents themselves are quite telling. Lucien Charles Grange is named explicitly, alongside Universal Music Group. Also mentioned is Ethiopia, another influential figure within Universal, whose last name has been respectfully omitted to avoid mispronunciation. Christina Kurum, who is described as Diddy's right hand, also features prominently in these documents. A closer look at page four of the lawsuit reveals a detailed list of all individuals involved, complete with names, pictures, and descriptions. This page alone paints a vivid picture of the network of connections. Further, on page 28, the details of the lawsuit delve deeper into the activities at these gatherings. It mentions that Grange not only sponsored, but also attended several love album listening parties at the home of Mr. Cole in Los Angeles. These parties were not just simple social gatherings. They were meticulously planned events that likely served dual purposes, mixing business with activities that were kept well away from the public eye. The involvement of powerful figures like Grange suggests that these events were strategic, used to foster alliances and maintain control within the industry. The role of the media in this scenario raises questions about complicity and the power dynamics that shield the elite. The lack of coverage, the silence from big news networks, and the subdued responses from those within the industry suggest a pattern of protection and mutual safeguarding among the rich and powerful. This unfolding story is not just about individual misdeeds, but a broader system of cover-ups and behind-the-scenes manipulation. If this lawsuit progresses, it could unravel a web of hidden activities involving some of the biggest names in entertainment. 
The potential fallout from such revelations could be enormous, dragging many prominent figures into the light and possibly leading to significant repercussions within the industry. As the case develops, it will be crucial to observe who comes forward, who supports whom, and who tries to distance themselves from the scandal. The actions of those involved, both past and present, will provide insight into the mechanisms of power and influence in Hollywood, revealing how deeply intertwined personal interests and professional relationships can be in shaping responses to scandals. These parties were hosted by a person known only as Mr. L.R., whose identity remains unclear, and by Universal Music Group, a big company in the music industry. The fact that underage girls and former workers were consistently part of these events raises some serious red flags. It seems likely that Sir Lucien Grange, a major player in the industry, as the CEO and chairman of Universal Music Group, might have known, or should have known, about the shady activities going on, such as Mr. Cole allegedly spiking drinks with substances, using brands like Delon Tequila and Ciroc Vodka. This isn't just a minor detail. Tucked away at the end of a note, there's a tidbit suggesting that Universal Music Group's decision to pull their music from TikTok might be connected to these unsavory revelations. It's as if someone wanted to hint at a scandal without making too much noise. Yet for those paying attention, it paints a picture of negligence and possibly knowing wrongdoing. As you look deeper into more documents, it becomes increasingly apparent that Sir Lucian Grange, alongside others like Christina and Ethiopia, didn't do much to stop the troubling events from unfolding. Diddy, who is also implicated in this mess, seemed to have no one stopping him from whatever he was doing, which now features prominently in the ongoing lawsuit. Despite the severity of the accusations, this lawsuit hasn't seen much daylight in major media outlets like CNN or Fox News. However, it's slowly gaining traction, becoming a topic of discussion among those who follow the nuances of industry politics. Sir Lucian Grange is not just any corporate leader, he's positioned at the top of Universal Music Group, holding the reins of power in the entertainment world. His involvement in the controversy surrounding Diddy and the legal battles that followed places him in a very awkward spotlight. Names like Justin Bieber and The Weeknd are also connected to him, showing just how influential he is. Pull back the curtain of media silence, and a darker scene emerges. The story gets deeper, showing layers of control and manipulation that go further than you might think. The underground of top of music power. But the story doesn't end there. The lack of attention from mainstream media suggests there might be more at play, perhaps an intentional avoidance or suppression of the details. This could indicate a deeper problem of influence and control within the media industry, where certain stories are kept quiet, while others are broadcast far and wide. What's more puzzling is the lack of public outcry or significant media coverage about such a significant issue. It raises questions about the power dynamics within the media and music industries, where certain narratives are controlled or muted. The implications of this situation extend beyond just the individuals directly involved and hint at a systemic issue that affects how information is shared and scandals are exposed. Lucian Grange, originally from North London, decided school wasn't for him by the time he turned 18. He started out at the bottom, working as a gopher at a talent scouting company, doing whatever odd jobs came his way. But Lucian wasn't content just running errands. He had bigger plans. He kept knocking on the doors of big record label executives until finally, the chairman of CBS Records saw something in him and gave him a spot on their A&R team. This was his first real break into the music business. Over the next two decades, Lucian didn't just work, he climbed. By 2005, he had worked his way up to become the chairman of Universal Music Group's UK division. Fast forward to 2011, and he was sitting at the very top as the chairman and CEO of the entire Universal Music Group. With Lucian at the helm, the company's value didn't just grow, it exploded. Today, it's valued at about $55 billion. Under his leadership, Universal Music Group claims the biggest names in the industry, controlling a whopping 70% of the songs that make it to the Billboard charts. Recognized as the top dog in entertainment, Lucian was named the executive of the decade in 2020. However, his reputation is currently on shaky ground because of his supposed connections to some unsavory business involving Diddy. Despite Lucian's denials, there's a lot of chatter suggesting that he should have known about these issues if he didn't already. Yet, when you look at mainstream media, there's hardly a whisper about his role in these controversies, 
as pointed out by a lawsuit. Lucian was last seen in public at the City of Hope Gala, which also happened to be one of the last events Diddy attended before the allegations hit. The event was a big deal, celebrating another mogul, Lior Cohen. Despite his denials and legal defenses, questions linger about what Lucian really knew or should have known. Despite being a CEO with a clean, polished image, Lucian's current situation paints a different picture, one that's tangled in legal disputes and moral questions. The gentle handling of his image by the media could suggest that his influence might be swaying how the story is told, keeping the more uncomfortable details out of the spotlight. This whole scenario sheds light on a larger issue of responsibility and transparency at the highest levels of the music industry. It prompts a deeper look into how power is wielded behind the scenes and whether influential figures like Lucien are held to account in the same way as others. The discrepancy between his public persona as a successful CEO and the emerging details of potential negligence shows a complex dual reality. The ongoing drama involving Lucian highlights the complexities of managing a giant corporation while maintaining personal integrity. It raises significant questions about the balance of power, the role of media in shaping public perceptions, and the ethical boundaries of corporate governance in the entertainment sector. How this story unfolds could reveal much about the inner workings of an industry that impacts cultural trends worldwide. As more details emerge, the public and industry insiders alike are watching closely, eager to see how one of the most powerful men in music will navigate these turbulent waters. This guy sits at the top of the record industry, and he's got a lot of sway. In a pretty eye-opening interview, Gene Deal spills the beans that Russell Simmons isn't exactly the clean figure some might think he is. You could tell the difference between a saint and a sinner. You understand? So him being up in a ditty party, and it wasn't like that he wasn't partying, because the tape that I saw, he was dancing. And I'm like, wow, this the fuck, excuse me. This the Rev <laughs> at the Diddy party? I wonder who he laying hands on. <laughs> who he saved. <laughs> if you thought Diddy was the king of manipulating and enticing women with questionable methods, it turns out he might just be following in someone else's footsteps. Russell Simmons seems to be the original teacher of these dubious strategies. The irony is thick when you picture this. Russell Simmons, a man of his reputation, actively joining in at one of Diddy's notorious parties. There's video proof that he wasn't just there hanging around, he was actually getting down on the dance floor, fully immersed in the festivities. This is hardly the conduct you'd expect from a reverend. You'd think a man with a spiritual title would keep a good distance from such wild scenes. The thought of him giving blessings by day and diving into party antics by night really muddles the image of a holy man. It blurs the line between the righteous and the wrongdoers, making you wonder about the genuine character behind the public facade. Step deeper into the murky world of celebrity life, where every party hides horrible actions and every friendship is just for show. The hidden side of celebrity ethics. And then there's this to consider. Knowing what typically happens at Diddy's parties, which often cross the line of decency, why would a proclaimed Christian and spiritual advisor choose to be there? There are plenty of other places to meet if it was just about catching up or discussing business, like a church or an office. This raises some uncomfortable suspicions about what he might be looking for at these events. We can only hope his intentions aren't as scandal-ridden as those of Eddie Long, who got caught up in a serious mess. His long-standing relationship with Diddy brings even more questions to the surface. How did a man known for his influence in the music industry take such a horrible turn? There are unsettling rumors about him demanding that his girlfriend participate in degrading acts with male escorts. A far cry from what one might expect from mainstream celebrity behavior. What leads a person down such a warped path? The story of his descent into these sordid activities is as bewildering as it is disheartening. This transformation from a successful industry leader to someone who orchestrates and partakes in such questionable escapades is troubling. It highlights a disconnect between his public persona, which commands respect and admiration, and his private actions, which tell a story of moral decay. It's a compelling yet distressing tale of a man who wields his power in ways that challenge our expectations of decency and integrity. The questions keep piling up. 
What exactly is the allure of these parties? Why mix with a crowd that's known for crossing lines and breaking rules? It's one thing to be a public figure with influence. It's another to use that influence in ways that contradict basic ethical standards. His presence and participation in these events are not just a personal choice, but a statement about his values, or perhaps a lack thereof. As more details come to light, the public's perception of Russell Simmons continues to evolve. From a revered music mogul to a participant in activities that shock the conscience, his path is a stark reminder of how complex and contradictory human behavior can be. This ongoing saga not only captivates those who follow the highs and lows of celebrity culture, but also serves as a case study in the challenges of maintaining moral integrity in a world where temptations are many and consequences are often obscured by fame and fortune. It's quite a stretch to imagine that someone could begin as just an average guy and then dive headlong into such bizarre activities. What flips the switch for someone to change like that? Unfortunately, Andre isn't here to tell his side of the story. Then there's Russell Simmons, who was a mentor to many, including Andre. These days, Russell finds himself swamped with serious allegations from women, claims of horrible acts. It happened very fast, very swiftly, but the next thing I knew, my head was in between his hands, and I can't call it a kiss. It was like someone's tongue just like coming into your face. It's hardly surprising that being around certain people, especially those you look up to and admire, can deeply influence your behavior. This influence can be especially damaging if these role models are engaged in harmful behaviors themselves. And when you add substance use into the mix, the downward spiral can happen quickly. That seems to be the trap he fell into. Seeing celebrities like Puff Daddy smoking cigarettes and weed in public is one thing. Witnessing someone you thought you knew escalating their behavior to much greater extremes is quite another. This guy didn't just step it up slightly. He took his behaviors to a whole new level fueled by the environment created by Russell Simmons and Andre at those notorious parties. The wild, out-of-control parties, the risky antics, it all seemed to be influenced by the people he was around from the start. Andre isn't here to defend himself, but the stories of his wild parties linger. Even his bodyguard, Bill, appears to have been involved. Now, amidst all these accusations against Russell Simmons, he defends himself by pointing to multiple lie detector tests that he claims to have passed. I took nine lie detector tests. People don't know that. Nine separate. Seven from the chairman of the Polygraph Association. One for each of the serious accusations. One for the, when someone said, for instance, I was violent, one person said that. I've never been violent, took that. And one for I apologized. I never apologized. For but can a few tests really prove anything? Or do they just raise more questions? The whole situation looks like a poorly written drama where no one seems willing to own up to their role in the mess. In this scenario, one has to wonder about the dynamics at these parties. Were they just about having fun? Or were there darker undercurrents? People often mimic the behavior of those they hold in high esteem. And if those figures are indulging in questionable or outright illegal activities, it's easy for them to follow suit. This imitation can start small, maybe just trying something once or twice, and then explode into a full-blown lifestyle. And once someone is deep in that lifestyle, it's hard for them to see it as wrong. It's just normal for them. This pattern of behavior isn't limited to just one or two people. It spreads, affecting everyone involved. Those who attend these parties might start out as bystanders, but can quickly become participants. As the parties grow wilder, the stories get more extreme, and the reputations of those involved become tarnished. Yet, in the haze of these chaotic events, it's easy for individuals to lose sight of where the line should be drawn. Russell has taken quite a liking to Buddhism and yoga, and it's not just for peace of mind or to stay fit. It seems there might be a more calculated reason behind his spiritual pursuits. These practices help in maintaining composure, especially in situations where most would sweat under pressure, such as during a lie detector test. This skill to control stress responses could be quite advantageous, making it easier to pass these tests without a hitch. One might speculate that his dive into Zen isn't just about self-improvement, but also about being able to face intense scrutiny without any outward signs of panic. This strategic control can be a powerful tool if, say, 
someone tries to corner him with accusations or conflicts, especially about issues like not getting paid or respected. As risks increase, the hidden dangers of celebrity life become clearer. What happens next could lead to either ruin or redemption. A traumatic party that nobody should forget. Beneath the obvious arguments and drama, there's a whole deeper level of trouble that most folks never see. We're talking about more than just shouting matches. There are real risks involved here, all happening out of sight, which makes the situation a whole lot more tense. When you see someone freaking out in public, you probably don't know the whole story behind it. Imagine how you'd feel if you found out the person you just had a fight with is now kicking back on your couch. That sort of thing could really push someone to their breaking point, leading them to act out in some pretty extreme ways. Now, why on earth would someone end up in jail from just going to a party? These aren't your everyday parties. They're known for getting totally out of control, where just about anything wild can and does happen. These aren't your regular run-of-the-mill parties. These are big, over-the-top extravaganzas. People who go to these events often walk out with their heads all mixed up, not really able to remember what just happened. The mood at these events can flip super quickly, from fun and glamorous to uncomfortable and shady, keeping everyone guessing. This flip-flopping vibe, where one minute everything seems cool and the next it looks like everything might just blow up, really throws people off. It's a kind of situation where you're having the time of your life one minute and then finding yourself in the middle of drama the next. These events are more than just a place to hang out. They're a breeding ground for drama. With all the hidden tensions and the unseen risks, they're like a ticking time bomb waiting to go off. The people who throw these parties, they know exactly what they're doing. They set up these elaborate, secretive events where the real show is happening behind the scenes. And let's not forget the cameras hidden out of sight, capturing everything. This dual setup, part public, part private, creates a lot of stress and confusion among the guests. Think about it. You go to one of these parties expecting a normal night out, maybe to let loose a bit, but you end up getting more than you bargained for. The public part of the party might look all shiny and inviting, but the private part? That's where things can get really weird. And the weirdest part is, often you don't even know about it until it's too late. Before you know it, you're caught up in something you had no idea was coming. This kind of experience can leave anyone feeling like they've been through a ringer, happy one moment, stressed out the next, and ending up wondering what in the world just happened. Moreover, the after effects of such parties can linger long after the music stops. The tales of what happens behind closed doors often spread like wildfire, adding to the already dubious reputation of these gatherings. As rumors and half-truths mix with actual incidents, it becomes increasingly difficult to separate fact from fiction. The hosts and frequent attendees of these parties often find themselves having to navigate a web of rumors and allegations, which can tarnish reputations and lead to serious legal and social repercussions. He got pulled into the music scene when he had just signed up with Rockefeller. Around that time, he got a call from Puff, who wanted him and N to work on a song together. What started as a single collaboration quickly turned into a handful of tracks. Surprisingly, it turned out Puff was actually trying to get him to join Bad Boy Records. This was a bit of a shocker, suddenly realizing there was interest from such a big label. He even had the chance to become part of the Rough Riders, but he was already leaning towards Rockefeller. Even though he hadn't officially signed anything yet, his decision was pretty much made. Looking back at his career choices now, whether he could have been with Bad Boy or Rough Riders doesn't really shake him. He's pretty content with his decision to stick with Rockefeller. When asked if he has any regrets about not joining another label, his answer is straightforward. Absolutely not. When you look back at hindsight, do you regret it? Being signed to Rockefeller? Yeah, yeah. Hell no. No, I don't, I don't regret that at all. He's not losing sleep over what could have been. His commitment to his initial choice shows a clear satisfaction with the path he took, despite what might have been tempting offers from other big names in the industry. As for the current gossip surrounding Diddy, it's as messy as one might expect. The industry drama that's unfolding seems typical, yet it still manages to stir up some shockwaves. The once popular pause game among the artists has now fizzled out, hinting at a deeper, more serious issue at hand. It's interesting to note that he's never been to one of Diddy's famous parties. Considering their reputation, 
it seems he made a smart choice. He's only heard about these parties through the grapevine, and what he's heard has been enough to keep him at a distance. These events are known for their lavishness and the wild stories that come out of them, suggesting all kinds of excesses that he wanted no part of. Avoiding these high-profile gatherings might have been a strategic move, preserving his image and steering clear of potential scandals. The tales from these parties often include descriptions of over-the-top celebrations that go beyond typical industry standards, with hints of behavior that could easily lead to trouble. The fact that he chose to keep away suggests he has a good sense of judgment about avoiding situations that could end up being more trouble than they're worth. This decision to distance himself from the more controversial aspects of the music scene reflects a cautious approach to his career and personal life, showing an awareness of the pitfalls that can trap the unwary in such a high-stakes environment. More riddles and scandals hiding behind the glitz of Hollywood than we realize, perhaps linked to high-profile figures like Diddy and Jay-Z. What do you think? Drop your theories in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into celebrity drama.